Hi everyone. I am using a little bit larger paper today. It's the same paper I was using. I just found this pad. I'm trying to use up all my paper. Uh, it's Toscana Aquarella. It's 140 pound paper, acid free, 15 by 40 centimeters and 6 by 15 inches. I was going to measure it for you, but it says it right there. Little ruler here. Oh, that's more than 15 if you ask me. What does it say? It's 15. No way. This paper is almost 16 inches. It's a wrong translation. It's a little more than 15 and a half. Probably outside the pad it might be 15 and a half. And uh, 6 inches wide. So that's funny. <laughs> oh well. I'm going to move this because it's just not the right size. This basket, see a little bit, is a handmade basket from the countryside in France. My brother's neighbor used to make them, I don't know, out of certain twine. I'm not sure. Very pretty. Working on the, I guess, is that lattice work? And just sketching that in roughly. I really wish I was like a little higher up looking down on this for a different angle, but it'll do. So I have that sketched out. So uh, I was talking the other day, I think it was in the last vlog I did, about the use of symbolism in still lifes. I guess a lot of the Dutch and even the Italian Renaissance, they would use like a skull, maybe an hourglass in the still life, sometimes book for knowledge, candle symbolizing, you know, fleeting life, valuing our time, which I guess is relevant to now. I'm doing still lifes because they're fun and I have the subject matter available. But everyone, and others in the Italian Renaissance, I was doing a little research and I came across this Cezanne, which, you know, he did many, many still lifes that some people find deserting because his fruits and vegetables are kind of perspective and it is so odd or interesting. and Everything seems to be like falling off the table. I love his work. I came across um, as a reference, I didn't see what museum it was in, one of Cezanne's still lifes and he had the skull in it, which is kind of unusual. It has like peaches and fruit and wine bottles. But everyone from Lit uh, Roy Lichtenstein to Picasso, Matisse, and really even if you think about it, Judy Chicago, she didn't paint still lifes, but her dinner party is like one huge sculptural type still life, which was a collaborative of different artists. The dinner party with different settings and yeah, I'm really sorry I never saw that it was right here in Brooklyn and I know pretty sure the Brooklyn Museum still owns it but I never went I don't remember why just never got there many many years ago I wasn't a painting again but so many different ways of interpreting still life I love Janet Fish, her still lives. Like they're so, in some ways, they seem so realistic. With lots of reflection and the images seem so realistic, but they're really, if you look at them, they're not. They're very, they're very intricate, but in a different way. So I really suggest you take a look at her work. Very interesting. I actually did a project with a few friends of mine and we shared different objects with each other and we did a painting based on those objects. Mine has a new home. <laughs> One of the artists I did it with purchased that piece, but I did a large watercolor and that was really fun to do. In Italian, they call it still life, natura morta, which is nature in death, I guess. Kind of odd, but, but I guess that goes with the stillness or also going back to that symbolism of it all. Feeling a little rejuvenated today, actually this afternoon. 
I'm making some vegetable soup, which makes me think of my grandmother, my Polish grandmother, Ukrainian actually, making borscht. I hated it when I was a kid, but now I would love to have some. Just the color of it was great though. I was a very finicky eater when I was a kid. I loved her food, but that wasn't one of them at the time. I loved her pierogies, which we called pitahair, which I think is a regional name. Everyone has their stuff. It's like think of a ravioli or think of a pot sticker, you know, uh, like a, uh, a vegetable dumpling. Every ethnic group has their dough stuffed with something. I love the potato ones. And I love the sauerkraut ones too. As I got older, when I was younger, I didn't because I was so finicky. But I was so young, I only knew her. I must have been like seven or eight when she passed. I have a lot of memories. I'm gonna get some colors down, let them dry, then go back in and put in some more. Whoa, that cadmium, whoa, it's really bright. I like it, but I just haven't been working with it. So it's like, whoa, Nelly. Oh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put it in the lemon, why not? Some of that towel in there. I guess a little more blue, but that mix of equal parts of yellow and blue may just be a little more blue. It's like when I think of a Crayola crayon from childhood, maybe that's why it's what I think of when I think of green. <laughs> you know what I should have mentioned? I was talking about using one color and talking about the uh, different artists that did still lifes. And if you go to Giorgio Morandi's bottles, he did lots of objects and bottles, almost like in the same like grays and neutral browns and just shapes and forms. That's someone to look at. So that brings together that idea of one color. It was very minimalist, kind of simple shapes. It's almost like you can like paint every, if you gesso a bunch of things all white so you could get shadow. That kind of reminds me. That's not what he did. I mean, I don't know. And it reminds me of that. It was all different ways and different subject matter and so many different ways to approach doing still life. I'm going to do more glazing on this, but I'm, for the basket, I'm going to give a, a very light wash, just wetting my brush with a little color. Once that dries, I'll come back and I'll just kind of even out the color and give a kind of a base coat. Talking about base coats. If you ever wanted to pick up a brush, or you used to, or you want to, there's lots of different tutorials, or you want to just get some basic supplies, I'll address that, you know, some things you could possibly order, you know, to get started. Very therapeutic, at least for me. Or if you like reading, make sure you do things that are relaxing for you and give you joy, or try something new, or go back to something you were doing and didn't have time for, and take care of yourself. use the blue, the ultramarine, to darken up, usually mixing it together, but I'm just putting it straight on here. The gardeners are out, so they can social distance, and they um, have big lawns here, so you can hear the, the mowers in the background. I think I will keep that light. So 
so funny. I just thought of my friend makes quilts, Sarah Hall. And when I think back, I totally forgot. She used to weave when we were kids, when we were in high school. She used to weave in camp. So I guess she always had that affinity for fabric. I never even thought about that. It's funny how you know people for such a long time in your life. New and old friends. You want to keep the eye, the, the viewer's eye, kind of moving on your page, right? So working different areas of the page, kind of going back to them. Balancing out your color. I just add a little bit of violet around this lemon here. My opposite color, make it pop a little. So always working different areas of the page. Always thinking and looking back. It's a good idea to do. Darken that up. Good to go. Done. Fini. Voila. Have a wonderful day. Try and make time for yourself. Try and uh, have your schedule and make time for yourself and do the different things that are important. Take a nice shower, leisurely shower, exercise, relax, paint, meditate, whatever works for you. But make time for you. And I'll see you next time.